welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Felicity Houston. Our top stories today. Labour victory in Southampton. Local election pressures the coalition. Labour wants to see a new way forward for Southampton. On your marks, set, strike. Unions threaten the games. I don't think they back this claim to disrupt the Olympics. Faster than a bullet, supersonic car speeds into Southampton. And in sport, a season of highs and lows. Looking back at all of the action. Labour gained a big victory in Southampton last week after the local election saw the Conservative Council lose their majority. Ed Miliband had made the city a key priority for his party and used this win to emphasise the national successes of Labour in the election. George Berridge has this report. Words from Churchill. Miliband talks tough as he tries to win over local election voters in the key battleground of Southampton. Labour wants to see a new way forward for Southampton, including attracting jobs to this area, taking action on housing, and also do undoing some of the damage that the current council is doing, including the very bad way they've handled the issue of the relationship with their employees here in Southampton. Well, I think that the Labour group have looked at this very carefully. They haven't promised the... Uh, employees that they can put back everything that was taken away by the Conservatives overnight, but it's something they can work towards over time. And I think perhaps above all, getting some pride back in the city. I mean, it was terrible last year when you know, cruise ships were coming here and there was rubbish tipped up in the streets. And I just hope doing the basics right, making the city look smart and tidy and neat and some pride is important. There isn't the money to pay for all this. Um, and so I think we're going to see in the next few months that the penny will finally drop and then the public will suffer the consequences. The change is in, in approach, in that we were straight with people, we looked them in the eye and we told them the challenges and we said these are our best solutions, you know, support us or don't support us. But they didn't. The swing was dramatic. The Conservative vote collapsed and Labour now holds the majority in this key council. As seen from above, the map turns red, showing the ward gains for Labour over the Conservatives. Lord Miraband may feel like taking a sigh of relief. With doubts about his leadership still being voiced by his critics and significant losses in the London election, he still has a number of tough battles before he can translate local wins into a national victory come 2015. George Berridge, Winchester News Online. Trade unions are once again in dispute with the coalition government. Unite General Secretary Len McCluskey wants union members to strike during this summer's Olympic Games, which has angered local politicians. Our political reporter Lewis O'Brien has more. The Olympic Games in London are still 141 days away. The event, which will see millions descend to the capital to celebrate the Games. But the threat of a national strike that would cause disruption during the event has sparked a political debate. The claims made by Unite General Secretary Len McCluskey has seen him call on the general public to take part in an act of civil disobedience. For one Hampshire MP, these claims are unpatriotic and have gone too far. Thousands of Unite members across Winchester and across the South are excited about the Olympics as we are excited about the Olympics. And of course they have their beef with the government, and of course they want to make their protest. But I don't think they back this claim to disrupt the Olympics and the civil disobedience about what is one of the biggest and most exciting events to come to this country in a generation. The argument has come after a year of conflict between the coalition government and the trade unions over the changes in pension reforms, which saw a nationwide strike on November the 30th last year. can't just see this as a new thing or something that is unpatriotic. And by the way, the unpatriotic um, comments, I think, is a bit rich coming from a government that supports employment laws that allows employers to leave this country um, and invest elsewhere, putting um, thousands of UK workers um, on the dole. A week can be a long time in British politics, but with the Olympics drawing ever closer, a nationwide protest is something that the coalition government does not need to face. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online, Westminster. A local tattoo artist has been pressuring the council for five years to adopt a stricter approach to unsafe home tattooing. The council are now finally proposing to bring in a bylaw which may bring an end to this dangerous practice. I went down to find out more. Some people think the tattoos are stylish and attention grabbing, but they can be expensive. Despite this, you might be prepared to pay a bit more at a licensed tattoo parlour such as this one to make sure that what you're getting is safe. 
but there's been growing concern that some people in Winchester have been tempted to go for cheaper tattoos offered by DIY tattooists at a potentially deadly cost. Just tattooing from buying your kits off eBay, don't do it. You're risking killing people. You might want to draw on them, but you are risking their lives. Because there are no controls on who can buy these tattoo kits online, the equipment often finds its way to people who have no training on how to sterilise it. If not properly handled, a tattoo machine can harbour harmful bacteria which is easily transmitted from person to person. People might see the sealed sterilised needles that come with the kits and feel quite safe, but as soon as this needle touches the inside of the tube, it's contaminated and poses a real risk of infection to the people receiving the tattoo. Winchester City Council have responded to the problem by proposing new bylaws which will enable them to crack down on these unregulated tattooists. We don't know what the risk is and we are simply trying to make sure that there isn't a risk so that if it is done at home that it's done in the same way that in the areas that we regulate it. The council is looking to adopt the laws later on this year. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online, Winchester. And now over to the sports studio of Lee Jarvis. Thank you. Well, it's been a mixed season for the teams that we've followed this year. One promotion, two sides in the playoffs and a couple of mid-table finishes. We're going to start with football. Aaron, you watched Winchester City this, this season. What did you make of that? Well, it's been a fantastic season for the Citizens. Uh, promotion, League Championship glory, into the Southern two, two, uh, League Division three. 1. Five defeats all season. You, you couldn't write, uh, have written a better script for them. Of the whole spine of the team has played superbly, uh, led by Guy Butters, who of course is a fantastic coach. Um, remains to be seen whether how well they do next season. Obviously, in a much more physical league. Step That's up. Absolutely. Um, of course, the big question also during the summer is: Will Jamie White still be there? My my feeling is that they won't be. Um, AFC Bournemouth, have, I'm not sure if they put in an offer for him already, but there's certainly a bid on the table ready for him. Over 50 goals. Broke, he was two away from the record. Speaks for volumes for himself. Fantastic player, and um, they will miss him next season if he does go. Um, of course, AFC Totten, on the other hand, playoffs. Obviously, they were very unsuccessful in that, but, but they've had a change in hierarchy. One league above Winchester City now, so it'd be nice to see if there's a win or derby in a couple of seasons' time. But with AFC Totten, like I said, changing the hierarchy, I don't know whether that's played a, a massive part in their campaign. They were second at one point, um, but of course, losing in the playoffs will be a bit of a blow for them. But they've got the Hampshire Senior Cup final. Exactly, the Hampshire Senior Cup to look forward to. Absolutely. Um, moving on to. Henry, Basingstoke Town, you looked at them this season as well. What did you make of, of their yeah. season? It's been um, an up and down season for Basingstoke with uh, yeah, a few good wins, but overall fairly disappointing, I'd say. They've uh, turned it around with a, a change in manager, kind of coming in the second part of the season. And I think that Jason Bristow has made some good improvements to the team. And so it's, it'll be interesting to see how they can uh, improve for next season. Fair to say that before uh, Jason Bristow arrived, it was, it was disappointing, but a, a brilliant end to, to the season for, for Basingstoke making the playoffs when it looked yeah. unlikely. 12 points adrift of the playoffs when Bristow ar arrived. What, what has he done to change, change around there? I think that he's just got the players wanting to play for him and the crowd love him. Everyone at the club loves him, ex-player. He's just got respect there and he gets the players playing good football and looking really positive on the pitch. Moving on to Eastley as well. Disappointing season for them in the end. Again, very disappointing. They could have, they showed a lot of promise with some good signings, especially Bradley Bubb, who really shone on the pitch. But disappointing mid-table finish and now Bubb leaving, you have to wonder how they'll do next season. Disappointing end for Eastley. It looked like they would make the playoffs at one stage and uh, f quite a few new signings this year. Can they push on next year, even without Bradley Bubb? I think that they'll miss Bob, but maybe with another signing of a new striker over the, over the summer, then uh, they might be able to push on. Moving on to ice hockey now. Yeah. Season for the, uh, the Basin State Bison, finishing mid-table, sixth Into position. Sixth and not doing well in the playoffs. They've had a really up-and-down season. They've played some great ice hockey, but you have to feel that their defence and their net minding has let them down. But new signings and, unfortunately, a few players leaving, including the captain, Nicky Chin, and the uh, player coach, Steve Moria. But they've got a new, new player coach in, uh, Doug Shepard from the uh, Slough Jets, who won the playoffs, and he's brought a few other uh, Jets players with him. So it looks like they're going to be a, a, bit of a bit of a new animal next season, but hopefully much improved. Perhaps Shepard could uh, give some of his expertise 
after winning yeah. the playoffs and bring that to Bison. Obviously, sad that uh, Steve Moria has left the uh, has left the club. But exciting times for Basingstoke now to Definitely. try and push on. Yeah, it's it's going to be a new team, and from the signings they've got, and with Kurt Reynolds as new captain, I really think that they'll be really pushing the top of the uh, top of the league next year. Well, that's all for sport. Back to the studio. Thanks, Lee. And finally, a car that hopes to break the world land speed record was showcased in Southampton. The team behind the project hopes that it will inspire young people into the field of science and engineering. Daniel McCrell has more. Faster than a bullet. That's the hopes of the British-led team behind the Bloodhound SSC. The supersonic car will be looking to break the world land speed record by reaching 1,000 miles per hour. The same team broke the record in 1997 at 763 miles per hour, which broke the sound barrier. But they are now looking to take it a step further. The more I've understood the engineering, and I understand a huge amount about it now, the more I know that we're going to be successful. To see a car that's like those kind of uh, dimensions, that long and yet so sleek, um, yeah, it was just jaw on the floor time. It's brilliant. A bloodhound driving experience has allowed members of the public to get a taste of what challenges driver Andy Green will face when reaching such huge speeds. The aim is to finish construction by the end of this year, with sights set on breaking the record in South Africa at the start of 2013. Danny McCrell, Winchester News Online, Southampton. That's all for this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, log on to our website at winall.co.uk. But from us all, goodbye.